Invasion of Chaos was released on March 1st, 2004. This format warping set introduced the Chaos Monsters, and while not necessarily a named archetype, these cards promote the use of light and dark monsters for big payoffs. Invasion of Chaos also introduced a handful of cards that support a style of play around banishing cards back then referred to as removed from play. Additionally, a new ban list went into effect prior to the release of Invasion of Chaos on February 2nd, 2004. Magical Scientist, Reflect Bounder, Vampire Lord, and Butterfly Dagger Alma were all now limited to one copy each, and Morphing Jar moved from being limited at one to now being semi-limited at two. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh's history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh's past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourselves in because anything is possible. Welcome to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! Good afternoon and welcome back to the Progression series. Uh, I don't know what you want me to say about this deck, except for, I think I can probably manage a sorry. So let me give you a little bit of background. Invasion of Chaos is one of the most important Yu-Gi-Oh sets ever made. You see, before then, every single design mistake they had ever made, Pot of Greed, Change of Heart, Raigeki, could be dealt with by limiting the offending card and ensuring that it only comes up occasionally. Chaos Emperor Dragon Envoy of the End is the first thing that required a ban list. The very first forbidden list comes out very shortly after the release of this set, and the deck that I'm playing should illustrate why. Now I have no doubt that Simo is on probably the exact same 40 cards as I am here, maybe a Blackluster Soldier fewer, but there's no denying that these two cards, Blackluster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning and more importantly, Chaos Emperor Dragon Envoy of the End, were format warpingly strong. Sed's got an unbelievable effect. Like all Chaos bosses, it can't be normal summoned or set, but can be specialed by banishing a light and a dark from your graveyard. Then once per turn, with priority, remember, you can pay a thousand life points and send as many cards in both player's hand and field to the graveyard, inflicting 300 damage to your opponent for each of their cards sent. So there's pretty much no outing this thing. Uh, we've sat and stared at the card pool that existed at the time for an unbelievable amount of hours and come up with nothing, nothing that can consistently out this card in particular. We're playing it alongside its brethren, Blackluster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning, which is much less broken. It doesn't reset the game state. Instead, it allows you to go over the top by attacking twice or banishing a card your opponent controls. Either way, both of these cards are unbelievably strong. So we're playing as many enablers as we can before they get banned. First, we're on three copies of Blackluster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning, besides being a really strong boss, he's also a fantastic top deck if your opponent has Chaos Emperor Dragon and you're not dead. Next up is DD Warrior Lady. Now you could play this card at three. It's an extremely impressive removal tool, but there's just so much going on that I don't think we have room for it in our deck. Instead, we're playing one copy as a target for Shining Angel. Next, we've got two Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer. This is the only card in the deck that doesn't necessarily facilitate the said or BLS plan, and we're playing it because it turns off our opponent's attempt at those cards. We've got three copies of Mystic Tomato. Recruiters are fantastic in this format. You want as many darks and lights at the graveyard as possible, as well as a Sangan as the target for Mystic Tomato alongside Witch. We've got three Shining Angel, Sinister Serpent, and you'll notice we're a little light, light. We have a ton of really playable darks and not a lot of really playable light monsters, so we're on three copies of Thunder Dragon. We're on Witch of the Black Forest and Yada Garasu. I think this is the last format that it is ever legal. Now, the really important thing you can do with this card is, alongside Chaos Emperor Dragon, send like a Witch of the Black Forest to the graveyard via its effect, alongside everything on the field and in the graveyard, then search a copy of Yada Garasu, summon it, go to the battle phase, and lock your opponent out of the game forever. The important part of that combo is the Chaos Emperor Dragon, but let's not forget that Yada is an incredibly powerful card as well. For spells, we're just on all the one-ofs we're allowed to play. I I've taken out some cards that are limited and very powerful, but probably don't have any utility in what I expect will be a mirror match. No heavy storm, for example. It's not like we're really going to care about anything but the said anyway. We've got change of heart, confiscation, dark hold, delinquent duo, graceful charity, harpy's feather duster, monster reborn, painful choice, pot of greed, premature burial, regeki, snatch, deal, the forceful century, imperial order, mirror force, ring of destruction, and solemn judgment, a weird main deck inclusion, but we got to stop this guy from coming down. In the side deck, we've got extra copies of DD warrior lady. If it becomes clear, we're going to need the removal. Three copies of magician of faith. I don't expect these to come up, but if we end up in a control style, 
um, like the game state gets simplified and we need to go over the top by like getting a pot of greed back. This is a way to do that. Triple my body is a shield in games two and three. It'll be protecting our Chaos Emperor Dragon if we're going first. Three copies of Bottomless Trap Hole. I guess it technically gets rid of these monsters, but it's not a very pretty way to do so. Uh, third, Solemn Judgment. It just depends on if we're going first or second and Triple Torrential Tribute for the same. So I expect this to be probably the shortest episode of the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! and hopefully the most illustrative as to why this card should never have come back without errata. Are you guys happy? Is this what you guys wanted to see? Did you want to see triple BLS, triple CED, and Joseph and I just fucking murdering each other? Is that what you want? Well, that's what we're going to give you guys. So first and foremost, I'm in the shirt of shame this week. I definitely deserved it after last week. If you don't know why, go check out the last episode because uh, there's about 500 reasons I should be in this. But that aside, Invasion of Chaos. This was the set that forever changed Yu-Gi-Oh. This set is fucking absurd and we're going to go through why that is most people already know the reason for this we're entering the chaos era of Yu-Gi-Oh as it was known and these cards are just so broken I don't know how Yu-Gi-Oh has survived as long as it has when you look back and see that these cards were printed Joseph and I are only going to have one opportunity to play three chaos emperor dragon and three black luster soldier before these cards get quickly limited on the next limited list and so we have to do this for the one time this is going to be a bloodbath and we're going to talk about why that is the primary reason is obviously the two monsters we are playing at three for this episode blackluster soldier and void the beginning and chaos emperor dragon and void of the end both of these monsters can be special summoned by solely banishing a light and a dark monster from your graveyard that's it you can summon multiple of them there's no restriction on that they have 3,000 attack and both of their effects are equally broken bls can potentially either banish a monster on the field although it can't attack the turn it does that or it can attack twice if it attacks a monster which means it can hit in for some big otks comparatively chaos emperor dragon is probably the sole reason that the ban list was actually created and konami had to actually start banning cards from the game i don't know who thought this was good card design so you can pay a thousand life points and send as many cards on the field and in both players hands to the graveyard as possible then inflict 300 damage to your opponent for each card sent to the graveyard by this effect this card is just game warping and the best part about this is because we live in a land of priority where you can activate effects before your opponent can actually respond there's no out to this during this time in Yu-Gi-Oh's history there is not a single card that exists that can potentially out chaos emperor dragon i've looked at lists from the world championship of this year and they are all playing chaos emperor dragon and there is no out to the card if your opponent drops it on you you just lose the game now to be fair they're playing it at one so it's a little bit less sacky but we're going to be playing it at three so you can expect to see this card a lot for the rest of the deck we have one breaker the magical warrior because it's limited it's a dark it's spell and trap removal it's just a good card all around one cyber jar and by extension one fiber jar the reason you want to play both of these is because if you get wiped by chaos emperor and you actually top deck one of these cards these are actually a way to get you back into the game you're both going to draw five cards which is the unfortunate part about it but at least you have a fighting chance instead of just going in this top deck war where your opponent is going to most likely have the advantage because if they set up in such a way with Sangen or Witch of the Black Forest they're going to get a search off of that with the Emperor wipe and then you're going to be very far behind so Cyber Jar and Fiber Jar are great comeback mechanics in this deck and that's why you're most likely going to see decks around this time wanting to play these two copies of DD Warrior Lady this is an all-star out of Dark Crisis that we didn't really get to show off last episode she's a Light. she can banish to ensure that lights and darks don't hit the graveyard if you want your own light monster in the graveyard you could just crash her as well and just not use her effect just a great all-around card and people are playing this in threes until this got limited on the next list we also have magical scientist in the deck again this card is so flexible i mean just look at all the different cards we have in our extra deck here we have so many different tools that we can go into and he's just a very flexible card three magician of faith very similarly to why we were playing fiber jar and cyber jar faith is a way to get us back 
in the game. If we already used a pot of greed or something earlier in the game, if we get Magician of Faith after an Emperor wipe, we can add that pot of greed back to our hand, potentially draw some more cards, and actually have a fighting chance. It is susceptible to Nobleman of Crossout, but I think this is a staple three of during this format. One Sangen, one Sinister Serpent, one Witch of the Black Forest, and one Yada Garasu. The dream is to Emperor wipe and then have Yada as the follow-up because your opponent will have no cards and you basically just win the game off the back of that alone. So hopefully we get to do that to Joseph, but it does require you know, a little bit of setup, so we'll see. For the spells, one card destruction. This is a card that you're probably not going to see in normal decks around this time when Emperor and BLS get limited, but the thing is, everything in our deck is crazy, and I'm trying to just get to Chaos Emperor Dragon as quick as possible. So card destruction is essentially allowing us to go five cards deeper into our deck if we draw it in our opening hand, and actually fuels the graveyard as well so that we can summon Emperor or a BLS. So there actually is upside here. So in a three Chaos Emperor Dragon format, this card could actually be insane. We'll see how it goes. We have Change of Heart, Confiscation, Dark Hall, Delinquent Duo, Graceful Charity, Harpy's Feather Duster, Mirage of Nightmare, and Triple Mystical Space Typhoon are here. This is actually another great way to get back into the game because with Mirage, if this is like your top deck off of Emperor, you can activate it. And then if you draw Mystical Space Typhoon off of the four cards, then you will be able to pop the Mirage and you now are back in the game. Monster Reborn, Painful Choice, just auto wins you the game most likely. Pot of Greed, Premature Burial, Regeki, and Snatch Steel. For the traps, Imperial Order, because it stops all the broken spells in this deck. Mirror Force, Ring of Destruction, and two copies of Waboku. Waboku, I think, is good with Chaos Emperor Dragon being in the format because it will stop us from getting OTK'd. And I think this is maybe necessary, at least for this format, and was played a lot during this time. Moving on to the side deck, we have another DD Warrior Lady with two copies of Kaiku. Kaiku is actually pretty good in this format. It stops banishing, which means as long as he's face up, the opponent isn't going to be able to summon BLS or Chaos Emperor Dragon and can also remove the threats from their graveyard as well. We might side deck this in. One Spirit Reaper just to rip cards out of Joseph's hand. It's also a dark, so that's nice. Tribe Infecting is a nice way to just clean up the board if we have to. Three copies of Book of Moon. This is just like a nice catch-all and can at least slow the game down a little bit. Heavy Storm because I didn't have room for it in the main deck. Last Will for the same reason. Forceful Sentry for the also same reason. Three copies of Torrential Tribute if we need more board wipes, I guess. I don't know if we will, but it, it's there, I guess. And then we have one extra copy of Waboku. I think I might side deck this in if I know I'm going first, because in that way, at least I can have a bit of a lifeline. We'll see what happens, but this is going to be a bloodbath. This is going to be an absolute massacre of a format. This might actually be the shortest episode of the history of Yu-Gi-Oh, because Chaos Emperor Dragon might just come out on turn one, all three games, and it might just be over in five minutes. Who knows? Anything's possible. But ladies and gentlemen, it's time to duel. Joseph, I'm not looking forward to this. Who thought this was a good idea? Oh, man. I mean, it's not like Yu-Gi-Oh! didn't have design mistakes in, in early sets. We've got Pot of Greed, we've got Graceful Charity, we've got Raigeki, but nothing is as brutal as said was. And I think we're about to see that firsthand. I know that every single person who's watching this right now is just salivating, waiting to see how one person is just gonna sack the other. You know, you talk about me being an anime protagonist and my sacking abilities. I mean, this should be my episode, right? This, oh, this we're gonna is put it exactly what I'm sure. looking for. Yeah, this is going to be the true testament to my sacking abilities. So good luck, buddy. Uh, let's do that rock, paper, scissors. We do have to shout out our patron, Mr. Radson Tolentino. Thank Thank you for your support, and uh, I'm sorry you're going to have to watch this. This yeah. is a big rock, paper, scissors, Joseph. This is a big one. Uh, oh, I'm literally shit. like 0 for 15 on RPSs. I got to say, imagine being the Patreon who gets shouted out in the episode, and the episode you get is the one that's going to last four and a half minutes. Uh, it's unfortunate, but good luck, buddy. I will... Draw for turn. Hey, good luck and to you too. Let's see what we can do. I'll start with a pot of greed. Yeah, That's a sure. good one. Yeah. Hey, you got it three times in the last episode. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Our decks are consistent yeah. enough that I think we're going to find it no matter what. Unfortunately, though, my turn is going to be a bit boring. I'm actually going to just set a few cards and pass. All right. Well, I will draw for turn. That's an interesting I really one. was hoping that going first was going to be a boon here, but uh, I don't know. Probably not now. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to send Thunder Dragon to the graveyard. Yeah, sure. That's fine. And I'll I'll do it again as well. Uh, I think it is more important that I get targets in grave than it is getting extra cards in hand. 
That's this fine. is rough. That set card could be any number of things, but I'm putting you on a recruiter. Sangan would be annoying. Which of the Black Forest would be annoying as well? Oh, <sighs> God. It's like everything in our deck is just like automatically winning us the game. Literally <laughs> every like card if... <laughs> beats me. All right, we're going to we're gonna shotgun a dark hole. Oh, that sucks. It was my magician of faith. Oh, wow, that really does suck. Oh, thank God for yeah. that. Okay, that goes to the grave. We'll normal Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer. Yep, I had a feeling that you were going to be on Kaiku. You have loved Kaiku throughout this entire series so far, so not too surprised to see him. That's fine. I'm on very few monsters that do anything other than make exactly said, and Kaiku is about it. Yep, so Kaiku hits in. I'm assuming you're going to banish that Magician of Faith. You assume correctly. I'll set one, and you're good to go. All right, end phase. I'll MSC the back row. Oh, boo. Ooh, okay. Happy to see that ring. Very happy to see that. I'll draw. Not happy to see that draw, however. <laughs> oh my god, of all things. Right. I will fire off a dark hole. Well, you gotta do what you gotta do. Kaiku, thank yeah. you for fulfilling your job and getting a light target out of the graveyard. Yeah, it's pretty good, and I put a dark in yours, so I'll pass and go ahead. Just end me. My life for a said, but unfortunately, I don't have one. I do have a delinquent duo, which is a bit of a double-edged sword here. Okay, so let me shuffle my hand up here and go ahead and pick one. All right, uh, we are going to go for this one right here. Joseph, I didn't want you to see this yet, but I had him in my hand. Ooh, well, happy to see him go to the graveyard, uh... I'll say that. That sucks. All right. All the cards in my hand are very strong. I'm probably going to kick myself for this. I'm going to give up a premature burial. Oh, Jesus. I guess prem kind of sucks, right? It doesn't get a light or dark into the graveyard. Right, exactly. I mean, it's good if it's like not turn one, I guess. <laughs> We're going to go for DD Warrior Lady. She kind of sucks as just a normal summoned monster, but I don't know. How many beaters could you honestly be playing? Let's see that second I mean, said, buddy. I wish that would be lovely right now. I wish I could do literally anything at this juncture, but it doesn't seem like it's happening. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to set two cards face down and I'm going to flip up Mirage of Nightmare. Oh, God. And I'm going to pass the turn. Okay. Uh, enjoy your plus four, buddy. Okay. So I'm going to draw three cards here. I'm going to put a three here to remember that that's what I have to randomly discard on my next turn. So I am good. Go ahead. Well, I guess I'll put you on it. Uh, I'm going to banish a light and a dark, and it is unfortunately not said time. We're going to go for BLS. BLS is good. All right. Well, and I have no response. If it's mirror force, it's mirror force. Uh, let's get in there. BLS has to kill a monster if it wants to attack twice. So I'm not technically dead if I take both of these. It would, however, put me out of something like said range, premature burials in the grave. I will Waboku here. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Oh, I don't really like Waboku, but I can't deny that it doesn't seem cracked as hell with Mirage of Nightmare. All right. Um, that's it for me. Go ahead. All right. I will draw. And uh, in my standby phase, I will have to randomly discard three cards. So right. I'm going to shuffle up here are you gonna pick them out of my hand if you don't mind let's get that yeah one. that's fine okay so there goes a second wabaku mm, we'll try again go for this one okay <laughs> <laughs> jesus christ and we'll hit this one too uh, sure oh my god <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. You know why it's fine, Joseph? Well, because the now I good. have a light and a dark in the graveyard for Chaos Emperor Dragon, baby. <laughs> oh, this is kind of weird. I mean, this card's crazy, of course, uh, but it doesn't actually contest my board. So you think. Yeah, <laughs> you got something else. <laughs> <laughs> I might have something else, Joseph. Uh, I have a little card called Snatch Steel. I will uh, happily take your Blackluster Soldier Envoy of the beginning at this juncture. Yeah, that uh, that that is pretty good, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Now I have a decision to make here. If I Emperor, it's like not particularly strong because what exactly does it do for me? Mm -hmm. I'm able to wipe, but then you have first crack and your graveyard will... Actually, you don't have a dark yet, but I you might have know. one in your hand. So that's the only rough part. BLS can attack, but then DD Warrior Lady can banish, and then we kind of break even there. I could banish, but then BLS can't attack, and then, you know, I'm still stuck on CED. I think there's a much easier way to go about this. I'm going to regeki your DD Warrior Lady. 
Yeah. Uh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Gonna go to the battle phase. I will hit for 6,000 damage. Oh my god, okay. And in the main phase two, I will pay 1,000 life points to activate Chaos Emperor Dragon, wipe the field in our hands, and win game one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Priorata is both players' graveyards. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, you got it. Okay, so I had to hit the BLS to get you a light target in graveyard, right? Yeah, 100%. Uh, I did have the painful right. choice. I did have the painful choice. So you had to hit either... Well, actually, no, you hit both of them. So... Yeah, yeah, it was it was bad for you no matter what. You you had to yeah, like no. hit the said out of my hand specifically to avoid that situation. Also hitting I'm out snatch here steel would be good. Like how I could have made the mirage of nightmare better. I think any scenario where you're able to resolve it, I'm losing. Well, good luck for game two, I guess. We'll see what happens. You're going first this time, and that does not make me feel good. Make sure you draw your card, sir. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. You're welcome. This is a hand. All right, so we're going to go Thunder Dragon. Sure. I'm going to add two to hand. That worked so well for you last time. Well, last time I didn't add two to hand. This time I drew Graceful Charity. Oh, yeah, that's strong. That's strong, sure. Oh, 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 God. Oh, my God. Is it now, just over? Yeah. I did not find set. I, I, I don't believe you. Set. I'm so sorry. Uh, dang it. Okay, well, I will be I will be sending the Thunder Dragons. Okay, I'm kind of um, happy about that because I feel like if you did find set, you would have sent a dark. I think I'm going to Delinquent Duo here. Gross. All right, take your pick. All right. Don't do it. Don't do it. God! Ah, <laughs> uh, easy, easiest roll of my life, buddy. <sighs> wow. This sucks. <laughs> Delango Duo is, like, especially punishing in this episode because you just don't... You want stuff in the grave, but every individual card is so fucking strong. Yeah, it's like, I, I went back <sighs> and forth on it. I was like, I don't want a duo and let Alex just fill his graveyard. And then I was like, what am I talking about? I just have to hit a spell. Yeah, and unfortunately, you did. You hit a spell all right. I don't want to get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of Kaiku. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so that if you have Thunder Dragon, this is really bad for me. I am going to set one card, set one card, and I'll pass it back. All right. I don't like setting cards because, you know, Magician of Faith exists. I'll draw. All right. So if you have Magician of Faith, you either get Duo back or you get graceful back both of which are equally bad for me yeah this is not looking good what else would you set there's not like many good things to set i mean like you could set a dd warrior lady i guess that seems a bit weird but it works there are the jars so like cyber jar fiber jar but like you're way ahead so i don't think you'd set a fiber jar in this case it's got to be moth i i gotta put you on moth well i suppose i shall Copy your move exactly, and I will just set and set and pass to you. Ugh, gross. Okay, I'll draw for turn. Oh, that's very strange. Oh, hmm. hmm, hmm, hmm. So we've got a pot of greed set, putting Neon Moth. Okay, I'm going to flip summon Witch of the Black Forest. Ooh, okay, fair. Yeah, not really that exciting. We're going to normal summon a Sangan. Oh, sorry. We're going to normal summon a <laughs> Mystic Tomato. <laughs> I was going to say, that is not a Sang. That's one fewer eyes than a Sangan. But yes, Tomato is fine. This is weird. I, I think maybe I should have kept a Thunder Dragon so I could tribute off the Witch of the Black Forest uh, and get her effect. But as is, I'll just go to battle phase and walk into your Magician. It is my Magician, so I do get this Pot of Greed back. That's pretty good. We'll go in with Witch of the Black Forest. Okay, I'll take it. And in main two, I'm going to set one card. All right. During the end phase, I'll MST the one you just set. Uh, you will not. I will not. That is true. Well, at least I don't have to waste the pot of greed. I guess that's a plus. I'll draw. Oh, boy. What do we do now? Well, you've got a light and a dark, so if you have it, you have it. Yeah, but that then is a weird situation because then you get darks in your graveyard as well. There's potentially a way to avoid this, but it's a bit tricky. I suppose I shall see what happens. I am going to normal summon DD Warrior Lady. Yep. I am going to go to battle phase. Sounds good. I'm going to attack into Witch. Oh, that's kind of cute. Would you like to banish it? I would like to banish. All right, I'll take my 400 and to the banish zone she goes. Okay. Main phase two. I will, in fact, banish a light and a dark. 
It isn't yep. CED, but I will bring out okay. Blackluster Soldier. With priority, I will go after Mystic Tomato and banish it. That is fine. And with that, I shall end my turn. All right, I will draw. Ooh, wow. That's interesting, huh? This God, keeps you this off a of dark in grave. I special BLS in defense so you can't crash like another Sangin or a tomato or something into it. So trying uh, to keep I you off I'm... as best I can. Are you going to pay for Imperial Order, by the way? Uh, yes, I am. Okay. I think I'm actually just going to pass here. Interesting. I'll draw. <sighs> Well, now this is this is curious now because you didn't do anything. I don't want to switch the BLS into attack because I feel like that sets you up. So I think I might just set a card and I'll pass to you. And I'll draw for turn. Oh God, I'll pay my 700. Okay. And, uh, hmm, this is a thinker. I'm gonna pass turn again. Interesting. I will draw again. That's interesting. Does that do anything? I think I shall also pass the turn. Ooh, I hate this. This is not cool. No, I don't like this at all. All right, I'm going to let Imperial Order lapse. Okay, that's scary, because now you probably have some crazy bullshit in your hand. <laughs> uh, you are correct. I'm going to Normal Summon Sangan. Oh, yeah, it's the end of the game. Yep, go ahead. We're gonna Dark Hole. Yep, that's what we're waiting for. There he goes. And there goes my Cyber Jar, unfortunately, as well. Unfortunately, you've left a light in the dark. That's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, if you're going to CED me anyway, I mean, anything I that true. I had in my hand, I don't think it was going to matter. But uh, I'm going to get Mystic Tomato. Sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we'll banish a light in the dark. Uh, and out comes the boy. I feel like you have to here. Yeah, uh, I've already used my normal. We'll go to combat. Keeping you off that dark was pretty good because you didn't actually get a search off of the Sangan in tandem with it. So, yep, pay the thousand. And I'm going to take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times three is 2,700. Oh, you had Yada too. That's disgusting. I did, yeah. I, I had many paths to get the Yada online, but keeping me off dark kept me off the double BLS that was in my grip. This isn't like a fantastic position to be in because because your entire deck is live and you have more of these big guys than I do. But eh, putting you at 12, I think, is too good. And getting rid of the pot of greed at a time that it's free is a little too strong, I think. You also got Graceful Charity. I don't know if you saw that, uh, which I'm Ooh, also not happy oh about. Yeah, Scientist was the other card as well. That's what took me so long to think. But okay, <sighs> big top deck here. Big top deck, big top deck. Give me, I'll take either boy at this point. I actually don't know which is better in this situation, but I'll take any one. Shit. <laughs> Go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me a recruiter. 80% of my deck is recruiters. So I have I have three Shining Angel, two Mystic Tomato, and said, said, BLS all win me the game. You have a lot of cards that win you the game here. So that's nine out of these 24 cards, eight out of these 24 cards. A 33% chance to win on the spot. Go. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> uh. <laughs> all right. <laughs> these top deck wars, the suspense. Uh, <laughs> here yeah. he comes show me the there ring is. of destruction battle phase motherfucker let's go no i'll do you one better <laughs> oh god the nice that thing is it, been great. it put another light in my graveyard so i'm actually happy it was that over set broke it replaced itself okay slightly higher than 25 percent oh fuck me <laughs> All right, so whatever is in your hand, it's dead. So I want it back in the deck so that it can remain dead. <laughs> it was right, Keki. Oh, fantastic. Oh, great. All right. All right. I, the one time I'm going to ensure, and uh, I really don't want the card back in my hand because uh, that card is absolutely worthless. This is hilarious. I'm going to draw. That's interesting. I'll mm, activate Mirage like of that. Nightmare. How is that and interesting? Go ahead. Yeah, that's interesting. All right. On your standby phase, I will draw four cards. God, that's so interesting. But you know what's just a little bit more interesting? You got your amounts. Oh, <laughs> shit. God. Oh, God. Oh, shit is right. You Let's have go the game. It, you have it. Let's go for it, baby. Oh, yes. Oh, come. Okay. You want to know what's fucked? I had MST Emperor Dragon on the next turn plus Witch. This was so <laughs> fucking over. You <laughs> didn't have Pot of Greed. Fuck. Uh. Joseph, I was so fucking close to just two owing you in this oh. fucking top deck war and that 
fucking pot of greed. Oh my god, that was gonna be the best way to just blow you out off of that mirage. But uh, you know, I I'm actually shocked. And you said this while we were side decking. I'm actually shocked that that last game had a significant degree of counterplay to it. That it wasn't just an entire wash altogether. Yeah, I mean, you kept me off darks for a while. Uh, it prevented me from unloading a hand of double BLS uh, single said, which would have just blown you out of the water. I mean, it, it actually looked like an almost fair game, with the exception of the fact that the entire thing hinged on resolving one card's effect. You're going up against the anime protagonist, so we're going to have to see if that yeah, luck enjoy your pot up. of greed in a graceful charity. I'm ready oh, for it. Oh, uh, what, what was that again? Can you say that one more time for me? Uh, I said pot of greed in a graceful charity. Uh -huh, okay, yeah. so pot of greed. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh -huh, and then yeah, uh, to uh -huh. follow that up. No, I'm just kidding. There's no graceful charity. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Might as well be. Might as well. Might as well have been. Yeah, for sure. Again, this these opening hands, you'd think they'd be like kind of insane and like game winning, but they actually are much slower than that. So I think I'm just going to set a couple cards and pass. Yeah, uh, this is this is pretty boring, not going to lie. Um, I'm going to go to main phase one. I don't have many opportunities to fire this off. I, I kept it in despite the fact that you're on Mirage of Nightmare, but uh, I guess I'll Harpy's Feather Duster. Okay, in response, I will chain Waboku. I figured, but you know, what am I going to do about it? All right, let's go for Thunder Dragon again. Yep, makes sense. Get you those lights in the grave. We're going to send him to the grave this time. No uh, graceful charity in my hand. I'm happy to hear that. And then we will set three cards and pass turn. Three cards. That's pretty strong. I will draw. See, it's, it's fair. It's fair. I will go to main one. Let's flip up this Magician of Faith and attempt to target Pot of Greed. Awesome. I love it. I'll add Pot of Greed to my hand. Now, this is where you show me the Imperial Order and I cry. No, unfortunately, I don't have it. Not this time? Wow. Okay. No order. Happy to see it. I'm going to change of heart your set. If that's Magician of Faith, that's just going to be great. But you don't I even... I mean, that'd be I, crazy. You have a duster, but yeah, it's just a tomato. Okay, that's like fine. I'll flip the tomato face up. No, not my tomato. At the very least, I can potentially get in some damage here. So I think I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to attack. All right, I'll take 1700 okay i will proceed to main phase two and i think i shall set another card i'll set another card and i will go to my end phase you can have that tomato back and i will pass the turn thank you ah another weird draw <sighs> And now I have to do some thinking. So getting the Magician of Faith in your graveyard is cool, but it also puts a light in grave. If you've set something like a Sangan, then this could be a huge problem for me. I think I am actually just gonna set here. I'll move my tomato to defense. We'll set one additional card and I'm gonna pass turn. All right, I will draw anything. Nothing on draw. All right, I will flip Magician of Faith yet again. Oh, this rocks. Oh Doesn't my it? God. Oh, it's it's so great. great. I think yeah. it's fantastic. I'll take this pot of greed. I'll fire this off. Show me the Imperial Order. No, no, go for it. Wow, still no order with three back row. That is kind of crazy. Well, we'll follow it up with a graceful charity then. How does that sound? <laughs> a, a, little, a little better. Maybe I can deck you out. I think that that's a reasonable idea. And right on time, Sinister Serpent coming in. All right. Oh, fantastic. Well, glad we to got see you're the boy. discarding Sinister Serpent and not a dark and a light. I suppose I'll give up this fiber jar. I don't think I'll be needing that. Yeah, it seems unlikely when you're up literally seven cards. Now I have to think. I shall do what I have done the last few turns <laughs> and just set another monster and another face down and pass the turn. Oh, epic. Uh, all right. Hmm. There's no way it's a third Magician of Faith, right? There's no way. <laughs> I've gone five cards deep at this point, so you could probably rest assured. All right, I'm going to switch these to attack position. This is probably bad because it puts lights in your graveyard, but you, you still need a dark. You'd have to run something like a Sangin in. I'm going to walk into the Magician of Faith if you'll allow me. Um, I will... This is tough because if I do anything in response to this attack, then it puts a dark in your graveyard. Mm -hmm. So part of me is okay letting this go i think i'm on 8000 life points yeah i'll take it all right we will try for the other one and that will fall as well hmm. this is so weird there's actually interplay in this terrible awful format all right i'm gonna set one and you're good okay i'm gonna draw standby phase i will get the sinister serpent back to my hand we dodged right. kaiku so that's good and joseph what, what what did you say was impossible for me to have as the set monster here the third magician of faith no oh, fucking way. oh. there it is 
my god. But this That's time fine. I'll get Graceful Charity back because yeah, since I, I have imagine. Sinister Serpent, yeah, I actually get to uh, still get the same effect, but I get to go three deeper. So I You're will have literally do ten this. cards up on me. Yeah, this is insane. <laughs> this is also payback for all the times you mocked me for only playing two Magician of Faith. Mm. All right, this was a long thinker, mm -hmm. a very long thinker, but I think I now know what the plan is. I'm going to discard Witch of the Black Forest, and I suppose I'll get rid of the Sinister Serpent. Ah, so it's going to be this turn then. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to activate Ring of Destruction targeting your Mystic Tomato. Now that is very interesting. Okay, we'll both take a cool 1400. Okay, fine by me. And with that, Joseph, I shall once again bring out the Chaos Emperor Dragon and with priority shall win the game off of his effect. <laughs> uh, I disagree. Uh, I'll activate Torrential Tribute as Chainlink 2. Oh. Well, that's lackluster. <laughs> Oh, Simo, I'm sure we're going uh, to burn me for nine million. I oh, was. good luck doing that with no cards on the field. Yeah, I had the math all planned out, and uh, Torrential was pretty... I think Torrential might have been the only card that pretty much messed with the math here, so... All right, let me think real quickly. You haven't committed to a normal summon yet, have you? I have not, no. Not that it'll matter. You've got nothing that you'll be able to summon with no cards in hand. No, I unfortunately. One, two, three, four four, five. Uh, we're going to take four off. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 times 300 is 39. Oh, that puts you out of said range. <laughs> hmm. 39. Oh, this is, this is a big thinker in that case. 39. Do you, do you have something else? Uh, I don't think I do. Um, no, 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 no. So here was the thought. Tr I could okay. chain link three Ring of Destruction targeting your Magician, but I would only do it if it put you under 30 or 3,000 total. Sure, makes uh, sense. Because then any of your doesn't. any of your monsters then become a top deck win. Makes sense. Okay. Oh, God. So you're going to take 3,900 here? Yeah. I also severely uh, punted this because I had a Monster Reborn. I could have brought that Witch back. But actually, I would have had to discard another Chaos Emperor uh, if I wanted to do that. So the problem was is that I wanted to have that second Emperor as some sort of backup in case you did have any sort of weird card that could have stopped me but uh well it is what it is we're in the top deck war and uh i suppose i shall just pass the turn to you i don't think i have anything else i can do go ahead all right by the grace of god i command to the top of my deck a copy of kaiku the ghost destroyer oh piss what is it? It's not Kaiku. It's, oh, that's big too, because you need a monster on top of it to actually protect you. Any, I don't want to say any monster does it, but all my Magician of Faiths are out of the deck, and I think that's probably like the only card that doesn't kill you, so draw? Oh, you got to be kidding me. Oh, no, no, no! <laughs> oh, Frickin' heck, dude. I'll activate painful choice. Oh my god. There's no okay. oh my oh my god. I'm so screwed. Okay, yeah. so I can't I can't said, right? No, said won't do it. What wins me the game on the spot? Kaiku's pretty good. Uh similarly good. Kaiku. Uh, good card. Yada Garasu's pretty good as well. I think that would probably win me the game. Um Damn, and now I gotta think. It's gotta be the BLSs, right? It's not, they're not very good. I can't get the SEDs because of your idiotic play <laughs> that put me under the range to fire there. <laughs> it's still a big body. Yeah, but a big heckin' chonker isn't exactly what I'm looking for right now. Yeah, okay, we'll pick the BLSs. Oh, man. The other problem is, too, I've drawn through so much of my deck that, like, my outs are a lot more limited. Double Kaiku, double BLS, yada. Let's check the graveyard here. So I have three darks and three lights. So, I mean, if Kaiku's up, I can't banish, so that's irrelevant. But you wouldn't be able to, at least with Kaiku's effect, to get me out of that. You could over the course of two turns, which is unfortunate. I actually... Man, that was a top deck and a half. That was crazy. I actually think, and this is going to be a weird one. I'm actually going to give you the Yada. Yeah, I figured. All right, I'll take the Yada. Uh, and now we are pretty much out of really good beaters. We've got some Reborns, so maybe we can find those. This gets us a turn. All right, hoping you don't have anything to interact with this. All good. All right. 
and then I'll pass turn. Okay, no drawing for me, but I do have Sinister Serpent in my graveyard. I was kind of hoping you'd just generally forgotten. That's fine. Ah, 250 defense, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah, but we're gonna normal summon it because I want to get in for damage, so. <laughs> sure. <laughs> get that 300, go ahead. Hmm, okay. Um, blech. So I do have a plan for this. I'm going to activate Change of Heart targeting your Sinister Serpent. Oh, I mean, yeah, that does allow you to stop me from drawing for a turn, I suppose. So, yeah, sure. We're going to get one more out of this. Uh, we'll yep. go to combat. Take get it both. 500 this time. Uh, I will set one card and proceed to my end phase. Okay, so no drawing once again for me here. Uh, end phase MST, the uh, back row. <sighs> Gross, I really needed that. That's a good one. Okay, so now here's what's a little bit difficult. You have two BLSs gone. I'm at the exact life total where if you top deck a CED, I actually lose the game. And the same thing for BLS. And you still have four of those in total in the deck. The other problem is I don't know how much 300 life points is actually going to matter in this particular instance. I'm trying to figure out a way that 400 is different than 700. Luckily, I can switch Sinister to Defense and Yada can't hit into it. So that's at least a plus. So I think to ensure that I don't die, I actually have to put Sinister Serpent to defense. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, so uh, we've still got a Kaiku. We've got uh, two Magicians of Faith, which do it, sort of. Uh, we've got uh, four Recruiters. We've got a DD Warrior Lady, and we've got two Sed. So in my 22 card deck, I would say about 10 cards that win me the game on the spot. Heart of the cards, guide me. <sighs> Oh. Uh-oh. Well, that's a good one. No, come on! Of all the cards it could have been! And this is just a little bit it's BLS, better, baby! Isn't it? Is it BLS? Of course it's BLS! It... Oh, Don't come even on, ask! I one left! Get him out of here! One Get him out of here! I'm dead! I'm dead! I'm you yes, need the Yada! Right. I'm just dead! Oh my <laughs> god, dude! No. Oh no! Oh! Fucking holy guacamole. Uh, oh, damn I can't it. believe I walked with this. <laughs> Okay, so here was the other thing. So the other reason why I didn't want to Monster Reborn Witch back when I used CED is also because of possible Torrential Tribute or Ring of Destruction, because then if you did that, it would have lowered the damage threshold for CED altogether, and I wouldn't have gotten the search off of Witch after firing off the CED, so I would have basically been in the same position regardless where I wouldn't have had a monster. One area where I technically misplayed as well was I didn't add Sinister back the turn that I uh, discarded it to the graveyard prior. So I could have actually gotten a little bit more damage. I don't think that would have mattered to be honest, but it actually would have held off Yada for a turn. What would my next card have been? Oh, that would have been uh, dead anyway. Yeah. So <laughs> well, it, it, it's hard to say because uh, if you'd gotten back Sinister, obviously the painful choice would have been different, but I don't know how important That's true. it would have That's been. True. I could have gotten something like a, um, a Sed uh, rather than the Yada, uh, and you would have had been forced to pick that or Kaiku, but that's just a different game at that point. Right. Oh, man. And, you know, you, you missed out on two draw steps, which ended it up i don't know if it ended up mattering or not but wow oh well i guess it did that, end up mattering that, it did end up mattering yeah yada oh. you know did what yada had to do what a like, disastrous it's, it's, game it's it's weird because it's so emperoring being on that high of a life total it's hmm. good because it wins you the game but the problem is it's like had i not done that and you actually had the means to just start going off which i don't even think you had yeah you didn't have a single chaos monster in your hand at that specific moment nope. then the problem was i didn't want to just give you the ability to summon a sed or summon a bls if you happen to have one in your hand because then the tables just turn on me because you had potential back row and then you could have like done stuff there obviously priority exists with emperor so that's not an issue. But I also had a BLS in hand, so I could have maybe tried to do something with that. I don't know. I mean, maybe just Emperoring there wasn't the right play. I it's I felt like it was going to end the game immediately for the most part. Aside from how many Torrential? Oh, you had two Torrential at least. So uh, I mean, I was they, on three Torrential out of the board. Okay, yeah. fair. Yeah, I had it in my board too for the, the same reason. But uh, I was only playing it when I, uh, I I didn't cite it in this game three. I had it, I think, in game two. But wow, what a format. This was this was wild. If you just want to play the sackiest form of Yu-Gi-Oh, this, this is probably right up your alley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is uh, th this was disastrous, uh, absolutely nonsensical. I I would not recommend this format to everyone. I'm glad they got rid of C uh, CED, uh, but oh my gosh, that was <laughs> that that was a lot more back and forth than I expected. We're gonna get a 30 40 minute episode out of this, despite the fact that we expected it would be like 
six. Yeah, somehow we were able to pull it off, and I'm just here looking at my graveyard. I had Premature, I had Monster Reborn. I didn't have Darks. That was the big... I had three yeah. Magician of Faith, and I think I had this DD Warrior Lady, and I had no Darks, and that was really the problem. And that's... We saw, actually, throughout the entirety of this episode, we both struggled at one point to get a specific attribute of card into the graveyard, and if the other player is keen on that and can do similar... Do what I did to you in the second game, where using Warrior Lady and BLS, potentially, to stop them from getting there... Kaiku is another good way as well, then there is some counterplay. There is a bit of back and forth dance that you're trying to do to just ensure that you don't automatically lose the game. Uh, I, I don't know. It was it was a lot more interesting than I was initially expecting. Yeah, um, I think that also our decks were just generally different. I, uh, you know, despite the fact that I won, I would say that my deck was much worse than yours. Uh, I'm in on like Shining Angel and Thunder Dragon as like turbo light cards because I thought the problem was going to be a lack of light monsters in the graveyard. But I found out pretty quickly that you just aren't ever attacking. I was like, oh, you know, he'll run into the recruiters and we'll get lights in the graveyard that way. But there's no reason to attack if it's not the exact turn that you're said BLSing, right? right? So instead, they just ended up being like random fodder that sat on field and occasionally contested life points, but not in any meaningful way. I, I like much more the version that's in on like, I don't know how many Mirage of Nightmare you're playing or if it's limited at this point, uh, but the one that's in on like card destructions, for example. Yeah, it was limited to one. I was playing card destruction because I figured it's basically just painful choice, but you just don't get to control what you're setting because it's from your hand. In that instance, it would have been completely dead. But in a format with three CED, maybe that wasn't the best call. My theory was if I draw it in my opening hand, I just ditch my whole hand to draw a new hand. And hopefully I just get into CED and can just like win from there. But uh, that didn't pan out. I also just realized retrospectively that I could have won with the same cards that I did. If I actually didn't ring your tomato, if I just slam CED down and you chain torrential, I could have just ringed CED and then you would have been dead just off of that. Yeah. So uh, no, there were definitely yeah. some ring shenanigans that I was like, I, I don't really know. Because if you slam CED, I was going to be like, do you want to do anything with Pryo? And then I've got right. bottomless torrential ring, which right. complicates things immensely. But I mean, you would have had the, the kill, right? Exactly. That's yeah. So, I mean, that, that was just a, a missed opportunity on my part. I was just trying to do the math thinking, okay, how do I get him underneath the threshold that Emperor kills him with maintaining this number of cards out on the field as well? But that extra 3,000 would have just put it over the edge. Although, oh, yeah. I, and yeah, I, I would have still been a Alive because all the my life points are currently knocked down from the Yada hits and uh, the actual Sinister Serpent hit as well. So I actually still would have been above 3k to survive the ring hit. So that missed opportunities. I I, I could have had it, but you know what? That's that's just how Yu-Gi-Oh goes sometimes. If there's <laughs> if there's a person with missed opportunities, that should be uh, my nickname for sure. I will say um this really. Uh, you know, impressed upon me how important it was that we actually got the ban list. You know, there's no ban list before then. Uh, they're just solving everything by limiting problem cards, and there is no way to keep Chaos Emperor Dragon in the game and not run into this exact scenario every single match. Well, what's fantastic is that next episode, these cards just get limited. They don't get yeah. banned yet. So uh, we yeah. actually are going to have an episode where BLS and CED go to one. And then I think subsequently they will be on the ban list after that point. I'll have to double check, but they're not going away anytime soon. But it's just going to be uh, it's not going to be this nonsense. This is absurd. This, this oh, should yeah. not have been allowed ever. And they should have immediately banned these cards. There was an entire format where they're limited, right? You were talking about there's an entire world's format where people yeah. had to show up prepared to lose to set. Can you yep. imagine? Awful. Horrible. Absolutely and people horrible. went to but worlds during Goki format, too. So, so guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of of the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! We're still in Invasion of Chaos. It is not going anywhere. So big shout out to our patrons, Pony Stark, Joshua Wiley, Tim 00 X3, Michael Dente, Mystic Walk, Oli, Neo Cypher, Slacker, Sylvia Wilds, and Gayoko, Part 2, Dan the Man Hoban, Synchro Guy, GW, Jarvis Martin, Logan Thomas, Dragon Lord, Dolly Watt, Peter Gregory, Rasmus, Shotagonist, Thomas Nelson, Emil Cohen, Ika Ironfine, Draconic, Alex Smith, Jordan Coons, Timothy Chen, Jesse Wood, True Nerdgasm, Yu-Gi-Oh! Hot Pack, Naru Celeste, Chris Wood, Sean Reese, and Jordan Husey. Thank you all so much for watching the video, and we will see you next time.